the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry, presents the Cavalcade of America. Tonight's star, William Bendix. Tonight's story, the Marine who was 200 years old. Hundred years old? Ah, what a joke. Joke? He joined the Marines in the Revolutionary War. And what do you think of that? Back in 1775? Yeah, and he ain't stopped fighting since. Brother, that's a Marine. That was me sounding off. Corporal J. Savage, United States Marine. It was back in 1942. I was talking about the darndest leatherneck that ever lived. My sea daddy. Master Gunnery Sergeant Lou Diamond. Us Marines that he trained swore old Lou had to be 200 years old. He looked that old, too. He had a pot belly and bow legs. And he had a straggly white beard. Maybe five, six inches long. Against regulations, that beard, but nobody opened his trap. Old Lou could get away with murder. Let me tell you about it. It was a blazing hot summer back in 1942. Us Marines were slopping through the mud on a North Carolina base. Every man of us ready to knock it off. Everybody, that is, but Lou. He was fresh as a daisy. All right, you not heads. This is a gun drill, not a taffy pull. Next time, get the lead out. Oh, oh, and stop chipping your teeth. You not heads of Marines. You Lou Diamond boys. I don't want you looking like a bunch of... Uh... Okay, secure five-minute break. Hey, Sergeant Chambers. Stand by. Yeah? What is it, Lou? Run the show for me. If I don't get back in time, Pete, I got a date with the skipper. How long? Uh, What's he want? <laughs> Who can figure what a lieutenant's thinking? Anything the matter with you, Lou? Uh, Last couple of days, your beard's been drooping pretty low. Me? I'm in great shape, never better. That's what you want the skipper to believe, isn't it? Shove off, Cox, and you're loaded. You've been beating us over the boondocks ever since we got that scuttlebutt about shipping out to the Pacific. You trying to prove you're on top of the heat? Okay, so what? Somebody snowed Powell into thinking I'm too old to ship out. He slipped his anchor chain. Too bad you can't tell him that. Yeah, I wish I could. Well, why can't I? Lou Diamond ain't never been known to keep his mouth shut when it paid to keep it open. <laughs> Lieutenant Powell, you can't do this to me. You can't do it. You... Look, Lou, there's nothing personal in this. Tell me, how old are you? Well, I'm... Well, I'm only... Mm -hmm. so, uh, what's my age got to do with it? Well, the records say you're 52, but uh, you've never told anybody how old you really are, have you? You've seen me out there every day, Lieutenant, on the double, everything on the double. Yes, I couldn't miss that. Uh, I can fight rings around any Marine in the car. You've been at it for 26 years. That's a long time. So what? I know that you're the best mortar man in the Marines, but... What is it, then? Lou, this is a young man scrap. Lord knows he's never soft in the Marines, but combat in the Pacific is liable to be the roughest assignment the Corps ever had. Well, so who's worrying, Lieutenant? I'm worrying. You have to be able to take it physically. I got a lot of fight left in me. You don't have to worry. Look, Lieutenant, those knotheads of mine, they... Well, they, they can't get along without me. You don't have to draw me pictures, Lou. I know what your men think of yeah, you. Yeah, but it's more than that, Lieutenant. I, I I can't get along without that. Look, Lou, yeah, I don't I, go around I, shooting my mouth off about it. I wouldn't want them kids to know, but... Lieutenant, we belong together. They're, they're all I got. Well, I... you got to let me ship out with my boys. <laughs> okay, Lou, you win. At least I don't have to worry about your spirit. I know that'll hold up. I just hope the rest of you does as well. <laughs> Right after that, our out 
outfit pulled out for the Pacific. It was August 7th, 1942, when we hit the beach at Guadalcanal. And it was tough going. Guadalcanal was no picnic. But for old Lou Diamond, there were two battles. One against the Banzais, the other to keep that old frame of his from falling apart. Vincent, Lou got two broken ribs from an exploding mine and a fat case of malaria. The docs knew all about that. But one thing they didn't know. They didn't know Lou was just about crippled with rheumatism. He could hardly move, but he stayed in there to fight. And he never let on to nobody. Not even to us guys around him. Hey, Savage. Front and center. You pipe me, Sarge? What's the matter? Yeah, what'd you do with them clover leaves? They need one. Ammo? Over there. I'll get one for you. Secure? I ain't no cripple. Okay. Over there, Sarge. The starboard. Yeah, that's it. Okay, okay, I see him. Here, here, wait a minute, Lou. I'll help you. What do you want? Ammo? Get your hooks off that, Chambers. What do you think I am, a dame? I can still handle a clover leaf. I ain't no cripple. Yeah. I heard you tell Sabbath. Uh, well, uh, I'm sorry, kid. I didn't mean to blow my pipe. It's okay. They pull us out of line for a couple of days, and the quiet gets on my nerves, I guess. Maybe the rest will do you good, Lou. You look beat. Who, me? I'm in great shape. Hey, Sergeant. Yeah, here comes the skipper. Maybe something's going to pop around here at last. Sergeant Chambers, I want you to check our ammo supply. Get me a report on the double. Uh, you stick around, Lou. I want to talk to you. All right, sir. Have it for you right away. Uh, what's the scoop, Lieutenant? Uh, I uh, got some scuttlebutt a few minutes ago. Yeah, we're heading back in. Is that it, Skipper? Yeah, maybe tomorrow or the next day. Good. They're swinging us over to reinforce the right flank. Holy smokestack, it's about time. I thought maybe we was the lost battalion or something. Pretty anxious to get back in there, aren't you, Sergeant? Well, I'm a leatherneck, Lieutenant. I didn't ship 10,000 miles just to rest my oars. Then uh, you're squared away? Top notch. Couldn't be better. Thought maybe you might be uh, worried about something. Worry? Well, combat plus Guadalcanal, that's a tough combination to take. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, Skipper, I, I you have been kind of worried. Well, yeah, what is it, Lou? Well, there's some three cases of beer you owe me. That's what's worrying me. What? Yeah, Lieutenant. You're a good CEO, but you're sure one lousy pinochle player. <laughs> <laughs> Diamond here. This is Mortars. Hey, is that you, Powell? Yeah, he's on the way. This is Sergeant Diamond. Lou, you old butcher. This is Hank Oliver. Ollie, how are you? What kind of breath are you wearing topside? Gold leaves, Lou. Major, huh? Oh, that's great, Ollie. That's Ding How. Stick around, Chambers. I may want you. Uh, here's the skipper now, Major. Uh, here you are, Lieutenant. It's Major Oliver up at regiment. Oh, thank you. Lieutenant Powell here, sir. Uh, Major oh. Oliver. Well, how's about that? You know him? Oh, know him. We were sergeants in China. That's so. Lou, they say you've been off the commission maybe a dozen times. How come you always turned it down? Uh, it'd take more than Congress to make a gentleman out of me. <laughs> Boy, Sergeant uh, Diamond. Looks like we've got a detail. Uh, what's cooking, sir? Colonel Edson's raiders, they're in trouble. What kind of trouble? Well, they're over on Matanikau Ridge, and they're surrounded. Edson's men can't get through. Well, then let's get through to them. Oh, no, not a chance. They're going to be wiped out and unless we can lay down a pinpoint barrage, and that's tough to do. Well, why stand by, Lieutenant? Let's go. Headquarters says that you're the man for the job. Well, Lou. sure. Who else? Let's go. There's only one hitch. Hitch? Well, from here to Matanikau Ridge, that's a bone-breaking march. It's cross-country all the way. Yeah, uh, so? So you could never make it, Lou. Let's not kid ourselves any longer, Sergeant. Ah, uh, wait a minute. I'll make it, sir. I didn't want Major Oliver to know about you. I should have told him anyway. Yeah, well, uh, stand by, Lieutenant. Mm -hmm. Here. Here, look at this map. Is there any way for me to get there by truck? What? Well, wait. Let's see here. Yeah. Yeah, there's a way we might make it. Uh, okay, then. Hoist me on a truck. Give him Lou Diamond on wheels. Come on, we got some shooting to do. <laughs> Okay, you not heads, hold it. Chambers? Up 100. 
Right, one, five, oh. Give me three degrees elevation. Traverse to right. Let's put it in our laps this time. We ain't got all day. Misfire, number three gun, misfire. Misfire, huh? Right, Holy smokestack. Secure that piece. Take cover. Chambers, get out of range. Okay, you knotheads, just take it easy. I got a date with number three gun. Hey, Lou, wait a minute. I'm coming with you. Now, look, kid, I told you to get out of range. Lou, you're nuts. You can't hardly move. How are you going to do this by yourself? Shove off, kid. There's a live shell in that tube. Don't worry about me. My baby's never let me down. I'm staying with you. I told... Okay, okay, kid. What do you want to do now? Well, you turn the tube upside down. That shell inside me. Uh, if she blows, you won't never know it, kid. Let me talk to her, and then we tilt her. And the shell? I'll catch her when she falls. What about you? I ain't never dropped one yet. Now stop your worrying. Okay. Oh. Uh, come on, sweetheart. Come on, you little doll, baby. Spit it out, baby. Give it to daddy. Spit it out. Catch it, Lou. Catch it. Yeah. You, you got it. <clears throat> that safety pin back in. Got it. Oh, Okay, you knotheads, we're in business. Let's get back in here and shoot. Sergeant Chambers? Yes, sir, Lieutenant. How's Diamond this morning? Are you just coming out? I've just been talking to him, sir. He's all right, I guess, but he still can't get up. He can't even move. Lying there helpless in that sack, Lieutenant, it breaks my heart to look at him. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, I'm going inside to see him now, Sergeant. If anybody wants me, you know where to find me. Aye, right, sir, I'll pass the word along. Lou? Lou? Huh? Who's that? It's Lieutenant Powell. Oh, <laughs> so confounded dark in this tent, you wouldn't know your own cousin. How are you, Skipper? I'm all right, Lou. Question is, how are you? Me? Well, I'm in great shape. Never better. That's not what the doc says. Hey, what does he know? I just got shook up coming back from a ton of car, that's all. I'll be squared away tomorrow morning. We um, just received a personal commendation for you, Lou, from the general. Huh? Colonel yeah. Edson's men got out all right, thanks to that beautiful barrage your boy sent up. Want me to read it to you? No, uh, no don't, don't strain your eyes, Lieutenant. I'll read it myself in the morning. Uh, I'm afraid not. Huh? Tomorrow morning, this time, you'll be in a hospital in New Zealand. Hospital? Me? Well, you, you, you're joking, Lieutenant. I wish I was. The doc says you're through, Lou. No more combat. Why, why, they can't... This rheumatism of yours, it may be weeks before you're able to navigate again. No, Lou, this time it's final. Lieutenant, they can't do this to me. You... This is where I came in, Lou. Remember back in Carolina? I wasn't worried about your courage. It was the rest of you. I guess I was right after all. Loosen your leggings, Lou, and do what they tell you. No. No, you're still wrong, Lieutenant. You're rocking the boat. Am I? How? Uh, because I'll be back. No matter where they ship me, just tell them knotheads of mine, Lou Diamond will be back. Listening to The Cavalcade of America, starring William Bendix, sponsored by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Tonight on Cavalcade of America, William Bendix is starring as Sergeant Lou Diamond in The Marine Who Was 200 Years Old. This is his story as told by one of his buddies. On Guadalcanal, the docs told us our gunny, Sergeant Lou Diamond, was crippled with rheumatism and too old to fight. Lou screamed at them they were slipping their anchor chain, but they loaded him on a hospital ship just the same. And eight weeks later, in a naval hospital down in New Zealand... Lou was rock happy, just about ready to blow his top. Take that, take it away. I don't want no orange juice. I, I want out of this joint. That's all I want. Now, Sergeant, be nice, won't you? 
Orange juice. Now, this is pretty special. Bring me a case of beer. Sergeant. Okay, you and me will split the case, huh? We do not serve beer in this hospital. Well, that's what's wrong with the joint. You want to get me out of here, give me my beer. Oh, you know, you're the most cantankerous... Girly, uh, 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 Lieutenant. I ain't happy here. Combat fighting, that's all I want. Mm. It's not going to be easy, is it? What ain't? Why, going back to... Oh. Commander Haynes did tell you, didn't he? Haynes? What's the CO of this trap got to do with me? Why, nothing. Nothing at all. Ah, uh, you want to get paddled, Lieutenant? Open up. Come on, what gives? All right. You're not going back to your outfit, Sergeant. In about a week, they're shipping you back to the States for good. What? Now, now, take it easy. What do you mean, take it easy? Commander Haynes says you can't go back to combat, and that's it, Sergeant. What can you do? What can I do? I'll... I'll take... You... you... Uh... Yeah, I guess you're right, girlie. What can I do? No use trying to argue with them. No, of course not. What good would it be? Oh, sure, what good? <laughs> Our, um... Are you all right, Sergeant? Yeah, sure, Lieutenant. I'm in great shape. Never better. Come in. You got those orders out, Corporal? Just send them on to... Lou! What? Huh? You and me's a couple of bad pennies, Ali. Keep turning up. Are you a patient over in the hospital? Well, I ain't wearing this bathrobe for no beauty contest. They got my duds locked up. I didn't even know you were around, Lou. I just got transferred here myself. Yeah, I heard about it. Major Hank Oliver, the new adjutant. You got here just in time, Ollie. I need you. Uh, what are you up to, Lou? Well, I, I got to get back to my outfit. I got to have my orders. Orders? Yeah. Well, you're at the hospital. You come under Commander Haynes. Yeah, but he comes under you. You're the big boy's man, Ollie. Lou, I don't think I... Ollie. Remember that time in China? Remember? And the MPs were on your tail, and yeah, I... Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Never mind, Lou. I, I remember you. Uh, what kind of orders? Back to my outfit. Guadalcanal. No, Lou. That's against regulations. I just can't... Holly, be. boy. Yeah? There's buddies and, uh, and buddies. Yeah. Okay, Lou. How fast do you want them? Holly, I ain't never been in such a hurry. Once he got orders, old Lou really moved. Nothing was going to stop him now. He was going to get back to us guys in his old outfit. From New Zealand, he argued his way aboard a Dutch freighter bound for Guadalcanal. The day they put into the harbor, Lou shoved his way ashore. Hey, Mac! Hey, you, Mac! Uh, you call me? Yeah, well, what's going on here? This place is loaded down with dog faces. All right. What you talking about, Grandpa? Hey, where'd you come from? You Rip Van Winkle? Listen, you army pup, don't give me no trouble. Where's the 5th Marines? Marines? Yeah, Marines. Fighting men, boy. Hey, let's go. What's the matter with you? Where's the 5th? Well, they moved out. Shoved off. Where to? Oh, how should I know? What's the matter with you anyway? Out of my way. I gotta find him. I gotta find him. I gotta find him. <laughs> Lou Diamond tackled one dog face after another, but always the same answer. The Army had moved in, us Marines had moved out. Nobody knew where. That was when old Lou got rolling. Us knotheads weren't on Guadalcanal, so he was moving around the whole South Pacific till he found us. And that's the way it was. Island hopping across thousands of miles, pleading, begging rides by ship or plane. And everywhere he stopped, the same question. Have you seen them? Have you seen the 5th Marines? 5th Marines? In Tulagi? Nah, never heard of them. 5th Marines? They ain't in New Guinea, you can bet on that. The 5th and no Habidays? You lost or something? Uh, so now I'm in New Caledonia and still no luck. Nothing but army. 
The Marines do the cooking, you guys come in to lick the pot. Look, will you wait a minute? I'm trying to tell you something. I got news. News, huh? Your outfit, I just found out there in Australia. Australia? You know where Darwin is? I know every port in the South Pacific. I gotta get out of here. Now, easy, easy, easy. Did you ever run across a Navy guy named Haynes, a commander? Haynes? Yeah, a medic. I just saw him down at headquarters. He heard you was around here somewhere, so he was sore as a boil. Hey, what's he got on you? I ain't waiting to find out. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Where are you going? Darwin, Australia. That's 2,000 miles from here. What's 2,000 miles to a guy that's going home? <laughs> Two thousand miles. That's a lot of steaming. But it didn't matter peanuts to Lou Diamond. It was in a side street bar in Darwin, Australia, that Lou found the payoff, the end of the long, weary road. United States Marines. Yeah. At the first? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Oh, sure, sure. That about, Yank. Where, where? Well, south of here, I think. In the brush. Fifty miles or so. Oh, thanks. Hey, you have a tough time going, though. Not any transportation from here. Uh, you see these two boondockers, Rossi? That's all I need. Fifty miles, huh? I'll walk it! And Lou did walk it, straight across the hot Australian plain. That straggly white beard of his got caked with dust and sweat, but Lou just kept on walking, adding up the miles and getting closer to home every minute that went by. And then, suddenly, in the distance, up a long, steep hill... Mortifier. That was music to old Lou's ears. It was us practicing firing. And in between rounds on top of that hill, Anderson and me was arguing the same old thing. Two hundred years old. Ah, you're rock happy. Look, Anderson, nobody can prove it, you dope, but I tell you, old Lou must have been there when the Marines got started. Well, it looks like he ain't gonna be around for the finish of this little party. We sure could use him. Funny going back into action without old Lou. Wonder where the old... Hey, stand by. What's up? Coming up the hill. Hey, you see that guy? What that looks like? Looks like? It is. Hey, hey, Captain Powell. Lou's back. Captain uh, Powell. What is it, Sabbath? What's the matter with you? Look, sir, steaming up the hill. Lou. Lou Diamond. Hey, you guys, look, it's Lou. He's back. Whoa, you know. Hey, it's your pack, man. Lou Diamond. This hill ain't no picnic. What do you want, full speed ahead? Ah, uh, you yeah. old son of a gun. Oh, I got speed. Okay. Okay, give me some air. Low, what the dose? Lieutenant, I... Uh... Oh, another bar. Congratulations, Captain Powell. Sergeant Diamond, sir. Reporting for duty. <laughs> I should have known you'd be here, Lou. We're going back into action. Don't I know it, Captain? I can smell it a million miles away. <laughs> Good. Good Take over, Lou. Uh, <laughs> all right, you nutheads. What are you standing around for? Marines don't fight with yak yak. Let's get back in there and shoot. <laughs> <laughs> That's the story. Old Lou Diamond, the darndest Marine who ever lived. Funny thing, you know, we never got around to asking him how old he really was. And now we can't. Because old Lou died last October at the Great Lakes Naval Hospital. The records said he was 61. But I still say old Lou was 200 years old. You just couldn't get to be that much of a man in 61 years. No matter where Marines fight for freedom and for liberty, the Lou Diamond legend lives on. Any leatherneck will tell you that, for we know. We know that old Lou is always around. to William Bendix and the Cavalcade players for tonight's story, The Marine Who Was 200 Years Old. Next week, the DuPont Cavalcade will present Breakfast at Nancy's, the exciting story of Nancy Hart, 
who one summer day shot her way into history. Our star, Susan Hayward. Be sure to listen. Tonight's DuPont Cavalcade, The Marine Who Was 200 Years Old, was written by Robert Mason Pollock. Original music was composed by Arden Cornwell, conducted by Donald Voorhees. The program was directed by John Zoller. With Mr. Bendix, our Cavalcade cast included Jeffrey Bryant as Sabbath, Stotts Cotsworth as Major Oliver, Don Briggs as Lieutenant Powell, and Chester Stratton, Dan Ocko, Ann Tobin, and Bob Hastings. We wish to thank the United States Marine Corps, especially Major L.A. Gilson and Lieutenant C.F.X. Houts, for their cooperation and technical assistance. This is Cy Harris speaking. Don't forget next week, our star, Susan Hayward. The DuPont Cavalcade of America comes to you from the Belasco Theater in New York and is sponsored by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry.